Our first alert severe weather day continues as we've been tracking strong and severe thunderstorms out there today, but the widespread chances happen tomorrow. We'll take a closer look at what to expect. Tonight's storms knocked down trees and even caused some flooding in parts of the Commonwealth. We'll take you to Woodford County for a look at the damage. We've seen him struggling to try to get to him and just wasn't able to get there in time. Tonight, a Lexington family is mourning the loss of a teen who drowned in Lake Cumberland. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. We are tracking a very wet start to the work week. Thanks for watching WKYT. I'm Kristen Kennedy. More rounds of storms are moving into the area, and they could bring heavy rain, damaging winds, and flash flooding. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell is tracking those storms on this first alert severe weather day. Yeah, we're already tracking some activity out there tonight, and we had even more, a little more explosive, too, early on in the day with some strong and severe thunderstorms. Numerous warnings that were uh, that went out, and even a tornado warning that covered up a few counties tonight. It's not quite as active, but I anticipate as we progress through the overnight hours, we'll track even more showers and even a few more thunder showers. Though they might look a little more like this, maybe a little bit larger at times, like the one we're tracking right now along the Fayette and Woodford County line, with some pockets of heavier rain. A little more upstream that's been coming together over the past little bit. Had a few lightning strikes with a little while ago, so you see. That now moving through Owen County and will continue to work its way toward the south. We work our way eastward along 64 out around the Moorhead area and more so out into the county of, uh, in Rowan. And you're looking at pockets of more heavy and moderate rainfall that will continue as we progress into the overnight hours. And if we expand our view, what we're going to see setting up from our northwest will be a cluster of thunderstorms that likely develops around the Chicagoland area tomorrow, and that will dive toward the south. And it's going to have a tough leading edge with strong winds. I'm talking maybe 60, 70, 80 miles per hour, a good possibility. This is a pretty intense situation as we move into the late evening and into the nighttime period tomorrow. We're going to take a closer look at all of the elements that likely come at us tomorrow coming up here in just a few minutes. The storms that rolled through this evening left behind a big mess. A severe thunderstorm knocked over trees and power lines in the Pinkard community in Woodford County. At one point, Kentucky Utilities crews reported about 200 people in the Pinkard Road Delaney Ferry Road area without power. A woman we spoke with was surprised when trees started falling. Oh, it was very scary. It was torrential rain, uh, and the trees were blowing like crazy. Uh, and actually, I was surprised when I looked out and saw all the trees that were down because even though it seemed like it was being really bad, you just never realize how bad it is till it passes and then you go out. Our crews also drove up on a water rescue on Pinkard Pike. Police officers had to pull a woman out of her car. Many homeowners in Boyle County spent the day picking up branches and debris. Some are dealing with flooding. Emergency management crews say they are worried about what tomorrow's storms might bring. A lot of rain and the ground's just like a sponge and uh, uh, today was just, a, I think, a prelude to, unfortunately, what we're going to see next week. Emergency management leaders are asking drivers in Boyle County to avoid going down any roads with standing water. And in Louisville, families dealt with flooding this morning. Crews had to rescue several people trapped in their cars and several apartment complexes flooded after water gushed in from nearby streams. Rescue crews helped with more than 20 water rescues. We are always tracking storms on WKYT.com, and you can too. Use our interactive radar to zoom all the way into your neighborhood. Download the WKYT news and radar apps to keep up with the weather when you're on the go. And share your pictures and video with us. Email them to eyewitness at WKYT.com or use the hashtag KYWeather. A Lexington family is remembering a teen who died in southern Kentucky yesterday. Family members say 18-year-old Carl Whitaker was camping with his family at Lake Cumberland when he drowned. Tonight, Sam Smith is talking to family members about their loss. He was only 18. He had a long life ahead of him. Carl Whitaker drowned in Lake Cumberland. He was with more than 20 members of his family that gathered there on Saturday. Loved outdoors, loved to fish. He was fishing before the accident. In fact, this picture was taken before it happened. This family says he tried to swim from where he's standing. 
to the part of the lake at the top of the photo. We've seen him struggling. We tried to get to him and just wasn't able to get there in time. Sunday, his family gathered again, this time in Lexington, to remember his young life, looking at old pictures and sharing stories. It's heartbreaking. It's sad. Whitaker's family does not want this to happen to anyone else. When it says to wear a life jacket, wear a life jacket. They say his death could have been avoided. You know, we was told and we were warned, but we overlooked that and decided to take, you know, a fun activity to a point where we should have followed directions. Whitaker's family will remember him fondly. They'll rely on one another to get through this tough loss. We can all hold each other and mourn together because we were all there together when we lost him. In Lexington, Sam Smith, WKYT. Funeral arrangements have not yet been set. The family has set up a GoFundMe page to help with funeral costs. You can find a link to that page on our website, WKYT.com. Police in Woodford County are investigating a crash that killed an 11-year-old boy and injured three others. Ryan Moore and his family were driving near the intersection of U.S. 60 and Midway Road early this morning when police say a man ran a red light and hit the family's car. They all went to U.K. Chandler Hospital where Moore later died. It's just, you know, I don't care. I don't, you don't see nobody lose their life, old or young. Well, one that's a living year old kid. The driver of the other car, William Mefford, turned himself into police. Mefford is charged with leaving the scene of an accident, causing death, one endangerment, and disregarding a traffic control device. Four people are recovering from a stabbing at a nightclub. Around 2.30 this morning, police went out to Salon Noah Noah on Woodhill Drive and found someone with a stab wound at a nearby chiropractic office. They took that person to UK Chandler Hospital. A few hours later, officers say three more people showed up at the hospital with stab wounds and that one of them had critical injuries. A Lexington woman and her pets managed to escape a fire this morning at a home on Tate's Creek Road after firefighters say she lit a candle and fell asleep. We're told the fire spread to a pile of clothes. Firefighters were able to put out the flames pretty quickly and did keep them from spreading to the rest of the house. Their loved one's final wish was to give generously to others, and today they did so for the 100th time. Aaron Collins died three years ago. This weekend, his family in Lexington went to the last restaurant where they ate with him to do what he asked, leave an awesome tip. When Aaron Collins died, his brother Seth found his will. One of the requests was to go out to eat and leave an awesome tip, $500 to be exact. I think he just had an appre appreciation for that industry and for people who he felt uh, worked hard but maybe weren't uh, properly thanked for it. His family carried out that final wish three years ago with a trip to Puccini's. Puccini's, smiling teeth, some more of the family arriving. The act of kindness took off. People started donating to the family so they could continue leaving tips. The response that we got caused me to continue leaving $500 tips, eventually you know, taking to the road and leaving a $500 tip in all 50 states. And to mark their 100th act of kindness in Aaron's name, his family went to the last place they ate with him, Cheddar's. None of us had been back since then for those three years, so I felt like that would be a good place to go and sort of avenge some of those demons and uh, make it make some happy memories there for us. They surprised their server with $500. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what to say. I, I thank you. He would have been happy to make anyone happy in any way. And I think what most people have seen coming away from this is that doing this sort of thing for someone really has a, a long lasting impression. And if you were keeping track, that 100th tip brought their total given away so far up to $50,000. And the Collins family plans to keep on giving. Manhunt is underway for one of the most dangerous drug traffickers in the world. Law enforcement in Mexico say Joaquin El Chapo Guzman pulled off an elaborate prison escape through a tunnel. Kenneth Craig has the latest. 
The last time the Mexican drug lord escaped from prison, he was on the run for 13 years. Now, the manhunt for Joaquin El Chapo Guzman is back on, following his elaborate underground escape Saturday night from a maximum security prison. Mexican authorities say the escape tunnel had ventilation, lighting, and a rail system to transport tools and dirt. It ran 30 feet underground from a house under construction a mile away and emerged just below a shower area inside El Chapo's prison cell. Mexico's president, Enrique Peña Nieto, is vowing authorities will recapture El Chapo. He is believed to be responsible for as many as 34,000 deaths. His cartel is the number one supplier of heroin, cocaine, and marijuana to the U.S. El Chapo has been indicted. Filmmaker Charlie Min made a documentary about the drug lord. Even when he is in prison, if he is in prison, he'll always call the shots from prison and turn uh, that jail into his country club. It is the second time Guzman has escaped from a Mexican prison. The first was in 2001 when he allegedly slipped away in a laundry cart with help from prison guards. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, New York. More than 30 prison guards are being questioned in the case. A Knox County man is in jail tonight after deputies say he led them on a chase. Around 12.15 this morning, deputies tried to pull over a driver in the Stinking Creek community. They say he was driving the wrong direction. When they caught up to him, deputies say the driver sped off. They were able to stop him and charged him with DUI. Two people are at the hospital tonight after a crash this afternoon on Interstate 71. Boone County Sheriff's deputies say 60-year-old Linda Kaiser was heading southbound on the interstate when she lost control and went into the northbound lanes. She hit another driver head-on. Kaiser went to a Cincinnati hospital with critical injuries. The driver of the other car went to a Florence hospital with minor injuries. The family of a Kentucky woman murdered for drugs is starting a hotline to prevent another death like hers. Megan Hassler's family is hoping to launch Megan Awareness Line. The line will allow callers to report missing people, suspicious behavior, and get physical and psychological help if needed. Hassler disappeared last month and was found dead several days later. Police say her killers admitted to searching her body for drugs before the murder. Her family says she was involved with heroin. The main message out of this is my daughter got killed because she didn't feel like, it wasn't that she didn't, but she did not feel like she had a place to turn. Megan Awareness Line will launch in three months.